and that is why National opposes this bill. I call the Honourable Jenny Salesa. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And it is wonderful to get a call today of all days. And it is a wonderful day to be a member of Parliament in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Yeah. We stand on the shoulders of giants. And earlier on, we've had many, many um, events where we've, uh, where we've actually thanked people like Kate Shepherd and others who have actually 125 years ago made sure that women in this country uh, can vote and that we as MPs can be in this House. Madam Speaker, the Education National Education and Learning Priorities Amendment Bill is a really important one. And Madam Speaker, the reason why we need this legislation is because um, NALP, which is the short uh, uh, term for National Education Learning Priorities, Madam Speaker, it is not at the moment closely um, aligned with um, the New Zealand curriculum. And this particular legislation is going to rectify that. It is going to ensure that, uh, that our curriculum, the New Zealand curriculum, is something that is informed. And um, when we look at, uh, in, in response to the Honourable Nikki Kay, when she said that we should uh, not do this, that the timing is not right. Um, I disagree. The timing is absolutely right. We are looking at the education system in total. One of the things that has come back from the Select Committee um, is the fact that we should ensure that Kōrero Mā Tauranga, Education Conversations, which was launched by the um, Minister of Education, the Honourable Chris Hipkins, earlier on in May of this year, with a summit in Christchurch and then another one in Auckland, that that informs this, um, this work, Madam Speaker. We we know uh, to date that over 15,000 people have filled out the online um, version from the Ministry of Education. So these are a lot of voices, Madam Speaker, and that is one of the main things that this legislation will do. It will ensure that our students, our learners are put back in the centre, Madam Speaker. One of the things that we've done is not only just hold those two summits, but when I looked at the numbers, there were not enough voices from Pacific communities, uh, from the online surveys and from the folks that attended those two summits. And so what I did is I went out to get those voices. Because, Madam Speaker, when we look at the current population of school children today, 10% are Pacific. But we know that in the next 20 to 30 years, that number is going to double. So it's going to be 20%, Madam Speaker. And so the voices of our students are absolutely important. Madam Speaker, I'd also like to acknowledge the author of this legislation, Jan Tanetti, who is sponsoring this bill, Madam Speaker, a person who has a lot of expertise in education and learning, someone who has taught in schools, Madam Speaker, for many, many years. In many of those years, she was also a principal, Madam Speaker. And we, on this side of the House, are really fortunate to have her as one of our members. In developing this bill, uh, Madam Speaker, Jan Tanetti has made sure that uh, there are significant contribution uh, to ensuring that our government's renewal of learning and education uh, in Aotearoa New Zealand is absolutely addressed. And, and Madam Speaker, if I can just go back to the reason why it is absolutely important to have the voices of our students, the learners, right in the centre, Madam Speaker, and I would like to quote from um, one of the over 2,000 people that I connected with when I hosted conversations right across Aotearoa in the last couple of months, Madam Speaker, and I quote, this is from a student, you can be in the best school, but if your cultural background, values and family is not able to be identified, then that will impact on your learning. This leads to pressure to be part of a different Pākehā identity in order to be able to feel like you're part of the school community. It's better to be part of the walls because you don't feel safe enough to make mistakes and to be who you are. You just focus on moulding yourself to become part of the norm. Madam Speaker, I cannot tell you just how many of these kinds of voices we heard as we went around. I began in South Auckland, I went to West Auckland, Hamilton, I went to uh, Porirua, Lower Hutt, Oamaru, um, and Dunedin, Madam Speaker, where we had students, young people, who told us things along these lines. And if I can um, uh, reword one of the uh, conversations that a young 15-year-old who came and attended, she said things along these lines. When I attend school, my vision of a better education school system of the future is one where I, as a person, I'm valued. When I enter the school, not 
and my culture and identity is valued, not just within the one week where we, um, where we mark the language of the culture I bring to the school, I want to be valued as a student and as a person every single day that I attend school in my culture, in my language, and in my identity. Madam Speaker, these kinds of voices from our students is why it's important to have legislation like this to ensure that our students, our learners are at the centre. We know, Madam Speaker, that quality teaching and learning and effective connections with Pacific parents and families and communities have the strongest impact on, the, um, on improving the educational outcomes of our students. And, and Madam Speaker, I would like now to refer to um, one of the quotes from our parents when we were connecting, um, asking them what would the, the education uh, system of the future look like to them, what do they value? This from a parent, and I quote, we understand health, well-being, and safety from a Pacific point of view. However, the education system does not. It starts with the family. That is the core of everything. It doesn't just start when the child turns up at school. Madam Speaker, um, in response to the Honourable Nikki Kay, when she was saying that language, culture and identity is important, I absolutely agree. It is absolutely important for so many of our students, not just Pacific students, Madam Speaker, because wearing my, um, my ministerial hat as a Minister for Ethnic Communities, I am now having conversations with ethnic community parents, with students, with community leaders and with educators, and I'm hearing similar feedback from our ethnic communities. They would like their language to be, um, to be in the schools. They would like their culture to be, um, to be valued in the school. And Madam Speaker, one of the things that was unfortunate for me as I was uh, convening some of these uh, conversations was I saw, um, I, I couldn't describe it in any other way other than uh, racial bias uh, in one of these groups where one of, the, uh, one of the parents that was there was telling us her experience while at school. This is a person who was born and raised in New Zealand, doesn't speak her own language, her mother tongue, but she said that aside, she still wanted to be valued in that culture. However, what I saw in this little group discussion was a person from the mainstream culture trying to, to shut this parent down to say, your opinion, your culture and your language is not important enough in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Get with the program, learn English. That is the most important language. And Madam Speaker, I'm sad to say that that particular contribution was from a teacher. So there is a lot that we need to do to ensure that our students, our parents, and our teachers, when they are in our schools, are in a safe place, Madam Speaker. This from one of our students, and I quote, stop institutional racism and bias. We as Pacific are successful. Value us and our children. Madam Speaker, ensuring that this legislation, the Education, National Education and Learning Priorities Amendment Bills goes forward is really important because we must absolutely put our students and our learners right at the centre, and Madam Speaker. One of the things that this bill will do is, right now, the Minister of Education can consult with a couple of teachers and a family or two, and that would be sufficient under the current law. But, Madam Speaker, we say that that is not good enough. It is not good enough to only consult with a few people. We must consult much wider. So this legislation will ensure that we reach out to teachers, to principals, to schools, to Māori organisations, to Pacific organisations, education, to proprietors of state integrated schools, Madam Speaker. And this legislation will ensure, as I say, which is my main point, that our students, our children, our learners are right at the, cent uh, at the centre. Madam Speaker, I too would like to acknowledge um, our uh, Minister of Education, uh, the Honourable Chris Hipkins, and um, his partner Jade for uh, the new addition to their family, um, Isabel Eva, today of all days as, as we celebrate 125 years of suffrage. And Madam Speaker, thank you very much for this time. I call Dr Palmjeet Palmer. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity to take...